ਹੈ ਬਲਦਨ ਜਰਵਲ ਅਮਰਨ ਬੁਰਤੇਂ ਦਾ ਕੀ ਜੀਵ ਬੇਦੇ ਦੇ ਚੀ ਮਕਾਦੇ ਚੀ ਮਕੋਨੇ ਜਿਸ ਕੋ ਸੰਤੋ ਕੇ ਉਹ ਜੋ ਚਾਤੋ ਸੋ ਚਾਂਚੂ ਸਿਮਚੂਰਨ ਬੋਜੀ ਮਾਤੀ ਕੇ ਬਨਿਆਂ ਬਮੇ ਬਤੋਂ ਕੋਨੇ ਕੋਨੋ ਤੇ ਉਹ ਸ਼ੋ ਸਿਮਜੇ ਨਾਮ ਕੀ ਸਾ ਲੋ ਇਹ ਚਿਤਾ ਚਿਤਾ ਉਹ ਚੀ ਜੋ ਤੂੰ ਮਾਤੇ ਪਾ ਇਨ ਚੀ ਕੀ ਕੋ ਲੋ ਕੋ ਤੋ ਸੋ hello everyone and mm, we are talking on torch of certainty and till now we have talked on general monto and we have completed like a short description on the general monto and in general monto we have talked on precious human birth and then we have talked on impermanence and then we have talked on karma cause and effect and then we have talked uh, on the effect of samsara and after that we have talked and we have already started talking on this special mantra and from the special mantra we have already gone through it chapter or refuge so today comes the second special mantra and then the second special mantra is vajra satwa and the main reason is um, we practice vajra satwa is because till now we have um, committed or accumulated so many sins because we have taken so many lives excuse me and uh in all this life we have accumulated so many sins till now and we have accumulated sins in our previous life and then we have mm, accumulated sins in this life and when we total it it's a lot of amount of sins that we have accumulated and when we are mm, building something the first i think it's very important to make the place clean and then we can put like a bed or a chair or something then it's very useful if we just try to put a bed or a chair something like that then it will not be so proper so just like that first we need to clean the place and for just like that to clean we are practicing this practice so we are removing all our um, sins that we have committed all the negative uh, negativity that we have accumulated we are trying to remove them so that is why we are practicing the vajra satwa practice and when we are practicing like uh, uh because this is like uh mm-hmm. saying sorry or saying or being repent I'm not so sure if we can say re- being repent or something like repent so there are so many different practices yeah for that but from all these different practices what your satwa practice is like one of the or actually not one of the but the best practice uh, for that and now uh, even in vajra satwa practice there are quite a uh, different uh, practices of vajra satwa and uh, like here it is said that uh, in the three vows or three yeah three atam chiksum ko it's uh, in there there's like different practice of vajra satwa and then in different uh, sutras there are like many different practices of vajra satwa and even in uh, this uh, vajra satwa practice sometimes there is peaceful vajra satwa and then there is wrathful vajra satwa and even in this sometimes they are like uh uh male and female vajra satwa together and sometimes there's just uh one vajra satwa like a union vajra satwa and then there's single vajra satwa and there are so many different practices we can do but here uh we are practicing the solo or single vajra satwa practice uh sometimes when we compare all these different vajra satwas like this single vajra satwa or the union vajra satwa or sometimes in the ratul vajra satwa we call the hundred syllable mantra for all this and sometimes uh, from how we pronounce and uh, if we count them sometimes 
the uh, the sea level might be like little uh, more or less than 100 but still we still cut uh, we still see all these mantras 100 syllable vajrasattva mantra and now here uh, about the practice that we will be doing is <clears throat> like really a simple one and we are just visualizing a single vajrasattva and here when we are practicing first we uh, in most of the practices what we do is we visualize ourselves as a yidam or like a vajra yogini or something but here we don't do that because we are because we have to think that we have committed so many mistakes we have committed so many sins we need to purify like that if we visualize ourselves as like a vajra yogini then we are all to pure so we don't have to do that but here since we are doing like purification practice so we uh, don't have to visualize ourselves as a vajra yogini or someone we just visualize as our normal being and then on top of our head we visualize a letter palm and then a letter palm which is white in color and then this palm letter transforms into a white lotus and then after the lotus then we visualize a letter r and then this letter r which is white in color transforms into a moon disk and then on top of that we visualize a uh, watch uh, letter home which is white in color and then it transforms this almost transforms into a five-pointed vajra so a uh, five-pointed vajra and then in the middle of this vajra we visualize uh, again one home letter and from this home light radiates out and when it radiates out then it uh, spreads in all the direction all the 10 direction and then it benefits all the sentient beings and then it again comes back inside the home and then uh, it transforms this home into a vajra sattva who is white in color and even though in the appearance it is vajra sattva in, it, in essence this vajra sattva is our root guru so whoever is root guru uh, so it is him or her <clears throat> and then this white uh, uh, or white white sadhwa he has uh, in this practice he has one face and then two hand and in his right hand he's holding a vajra uh, five-pointed vajra and uh, like in his heart and then in his left hand he is holding a bell which is made up of, of silver and his right feet or right leg is little like mm, spread out and then his left uh, leg is like in a water boat and then he's wearing all the uh, peaceful uh, deities uh, ornaments and clothes and when we are talking about uh, these clothes they are uh, we usually <coughs> count them into six so there's the crown and then earrings and then necklaces there are like three necklaces usually when you see it properly whenever you see a peaceful tt when you check it properly there's always like three uh short one medium one and the long one and then there are like bracelets and then there are like anklets and then there's like bells like that and there are six uh, sometimes people say like eight and sometimes people say like six so like there's three <clears throat> necklaces uh, sometimes people count them as three and sometimes people uh, count them as one and this uh, usually we call them like six different jewelers and this six jewelers uh, represents the six perfection and <clears throat> his head is like hair is like tight here and uh, and on top of that uh, there is the Mikyupa. And after that, yes, I'm just one. Same big in the good is a part of the now. And then after that, uh, uh, we visualize uh, 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 three letters on the Vajra Sadawas Om Ahu. And uh, in his heart, uh, uh, 
uh, on the lotus and then on the moon disc we visualize a home letter and on from the front then we visualize the hundred syllable mantra on the surface of my mantra life is available and uh, this hundred syllable mantra and when we are and all these letters are white in color and not like different colors sometimes they are like different colors but here yeah, these are all like white in color and the letters are facing outside and <clears throat> they are, are rotating so when we are practicing it's quite difficult to do all this uh, so let alone rotating the mantra we cannot even spell the hundred <coughs> syllable mantra properly so it's almost uh, impossible for us to visualize all this but what we can do is we can just try to visualize the whole letter very properly so we try to visualize it again and again and we try not to get distracted and sometimes if we feel like little too bored doing the same practice again and again then we can again visualize uh, Vajrasam Satwa himself so sometimes we can visualize his face and sometimes we can visualize his uh, hand sometimes we can visualize the lotus flower sometimes we can visualize the bell that he's holding Sometimes we can visualize the Vajra that he's holding and all this stuff. So we can just take turn like that. And then uh, we might be a little not so <clears throat> bored during the practice. And uh, uh, when we do the uh, uh, rotation of the mantra, then the light radiates out. And then it again make offering to all the Buddhas of the Ten Direction and all the Gurus and all the Lamas. And then again, it uh, dissolves into you uh, after anything. And then it dissolves into you. And then from that letter, then uh, all the Amritas and all the blessings come out from that letter home. And uh, it fills the Vajra the way that you have been visualizing. And and it fills his body and from his toe uh, all this blessing comes uh, uh, from his right feet uh, the thumb i'm not so sure if you can see thumb uh, of the toe the big toe i don't yeah big toe or something so from there uh, all the blessings come out and then, <clears throat> since you are visualizing the watcher sat on your head, so all the blessings come out from this uh, big thumb or toe, whatever. And then it goes into you. And then when it goes into you, you visualize that uh, this blessing is clearing away all the mistakes that you have done, all the sins that you have committed. And then <clears throat> whatever mistakes that you have done, whatever negative, negativity that you have done. You try to visualize that all of them have been claimed. And then, after clearing away all this negativity, then all the negative, like, they will come out from all your different uh, places of your body, like from the pores, from the holes, and everywhere. So all this negativity, like you visualize, like, red uh, blood or some impurities coming out from your body, and then they dissolve into the ground. And the Jishara that you can make a machine won't go in public money won't say anything from the dog ship to the Manchula. And then after uh, getting dissolved in the left uh, in the land, then your body becomes very clear, very pure. And then a small amount of um, the blessing will go up and um, it will touch the feet of Vajra Satwa. And then he becomes uh, the Vajrasattva becomes very happy and then he gives a smile to you like that. And uh, this type of visualization, when you're reciting the mantra, so you recite this again and again, and you try to do the visualization also again and again. You try to keep doing this visualization again and again. So every time you do the recitation, <clears throat> and you try to do this visualization. And then we said, uh, here it is said that uh, if you get distracted, then uh, you will not get any blessing. But uh, actually, it is. I don't think it's like 
directly saying that if you get into, uh, distracted, then you won't get blessing. I don't think it's like that. Uh, but maybe we won't get so much a blessing, but uh, we, we, we do get blessing because uh, it's almost impossible for us to, to uh, practice without being distracted. But we try to not be distracted, so we try to do as good or as best as we can, and we try to do this again and again. And again. And after that, uh, then uh, we, uh, if you know how to read the text, then there are some more prayers to be done. So you join your head and then you recite them like that, and then you read that. So uh, the way to uh, do the recitation, uh, to the way you uh, do the uh, prayers, and then the way you stop, the way how you stop, where you stop, that I think. When you are uh, starting to do the watch the Sabbath practice, then I think you can just have a look, or maybe you can ask one of the teacher that you have. <clears throat> and I'm sure all of you have one teacher, so they will be able to guide you how to read and where to stop, uh, where to do the recitation, how to do the dedication, and where, where to do the de dedication and all. And uh, after the practice, then you do the uh, dedication prayer and like that. And mm, the main like signal or sign, I guess, uh, of uh, when you do the practice and when you are done with the practice, actually not done like but whenever you're doing, so done for the day or done for the session, then uh, there are some signs that you might be able to see if your practices are going well. You feel like a little light because sometimes we feel so heavy and then when we feel so heavy, then we don't want to practice or we don't want to read or something like we just want to laze around. But if you if you have done the practice well, then you feel in your body feeling quite light and then you feel like quite bright from your mind. And sometimes you feel like there are some realization that is arriving in your mind. And in essence, what it is saying that you should uh, try not to commit any sins. You should try to do as much dharma as you can like that. And and uh, when we are uh, talking about this, then the, uh, the main thing is uh, when we have committed a dharma or when we have committed a sin, but in when we are doing this, it seems like maybe we are doing very little dharma or maybe we are doing like a very little sin. So when we are doing this, doing this then it doesn't feel like it's such a big deal, but just like everything. Uh, sorry for that. <clears throat> And for just like that, uh, when we are doing a dharma or when we are doing a sin, it feels like we are not doing a big amount of a dharma or sin, but it's not like that. Because if we don't do any repent uh, like that, then even a small uh, sin will gradually grow. Just like if you have some, if you have received a loan from a bank, even at the beginning, if it's very like little amount, but every year it increases because of the interest. So just like that, even if you have committed a very small sin, if you don't repent, if you don't feel sorry for that, then uh, there is something like an interest for that also. So it will get bigger and bigger and bigger. So it is very important to have repent and to feel sorry that I've committed a mistake. And uh, when we are talking about sin, then it is, uh, I think we have already talked about that. The sins that we talk about are like the 10 sins and uh, there are some other sins also, but usually most of the sins are come uh, included in the 10 sins. Now the sins from the body, sins from the speech and sins from the mind. So these are like the mm, main sins that we will be or we are committing. And then when we are talking about uh, this practice, there are usually what we do is we need to have the full strength. Because sometimes <clears throat> we, when we commit a mistake, then we don't feel so much 
of repent. We just say sorry, but we don't feel sorry. So if it is like that, then even if we do this practice, it's not going to help much. Because when we are practicing, practicing this, we should have the feeling that, oh, I'm very, very sorry. What I did was mistake, so something like that. So here for that, we have like four different things that we should uh, consider when we are practicing this. And then the first one is, uh, so uh, there are like different names for this, but I think it's better to understand what they mean instead of like the names. So the first one is when we are repenting, the first one is we need to feel sorry for what we have done. We have to uh, uh, feel extremely sorry and we have to repent on that. Uh, so first we need to have like a very strong feeling of having uh, what I did was wrong. So we need to have that. And then the second one is uh, we need to think that if in the future, if I have the same opportunity, then even if I have the same opportunity, I'm not going to commit this same mistake again. So you need to have a strong belief that even if you are able to do that again, you are not going to do that. So you need to have that feeling. So that is like the second one. And then the third one is <clears throat> uh, when you are saying sorry, so sometimes only you uh, cannot be able to make something right. You need someone else to make something right. So just like that in here, uh, we need to have uh, like the refuge, uh, like the watcher is over here. So we need to have him uh, to help us say sorry or to have the repent. And then the fourth one is uh, like uh, doing a practice. So whatever practice we are doing. So for here, like uh, reciting the mantra of this. <clears throat> so these are uh, like the practice. And when we are talking about this, uh, the last one, there are so many different types of practices that we can do. The antidote that we can uh, take for all the mistakes that we have done, all the, uh, yeah, for like the antidote for the mistake that we have done. And here in this text, we are talking about six different antidotes. And then uh, from these six dif uh, different antidotes, the first one is like, uh, there are so many antidote uh, or so many different practices that we can do. We can do the practices of Amitabha, we can do the practice of Medicine Buddha, we can do the practice of Akshobhaya, like that. Mm. And we try to recite the mantra like that. And then, yeah, so that is like the first one. And then the second one is, we can try to build like the statues we can try to build like uh, monasteries, we can try to build some temples or we can try to write or publish some books on Dharma like that. So this is like the second antidote. And then the third one is making offerings. So where we can make offering to the Buddha, we can make offering to the Dharma, we can make offering to the Sangha, we can practice the mandala practice, and then we can make offering to the people who are practicing uh, the Dharma like that, and especially from all this, the main and the most important offering is making offering to your Lama. So that has the most benefit. So uh, you should focus on that. And then the fourth one is like reciting all the sutras, uh, like uh, Prajana Paramita, like that. And if you can recite that, so this is also like a big and huge uh, benefit benefiting antidote. And then the fifth one is like reciting the mantra uh, like uh, Vajrasattva or Akshobhaya dear um, mantra. And then the last one is uh, believing in the uh, practices that you do <clears throat> and then visualizing in emptiness, visualizing in Ma or, or practicing in Mahamudra. And all these are like uh, the final antidote that you will be able to do. So you can do any of this. So there are so many different attitudes or so many different practices that you can do. But here uh, uh, we think that uh, the most important thing is, uh, or the most beneficial thing is practicing uh, the Vajrasattva practice. So it is 
really going to help you remove away all your obstacles because because of all the sins that we have committed we will have so many obstacles in our practices especially when we are practicing so these are all uh, when we have obstacles i think it is actually like quite a good sign that only when you are doing something good then there will be obstacle so when you have an obstacle so i think you should practice more and more <clears throat> and then here what we say is uh, like for an example so especially like here if you have been here in Kathmandu, the place is quite dusty most of the time especially when it's not raining then it gets quite dusty so if you place a mandala in the middle of the city so like a small mandala if you just place it in the middle of the city and then if you just keep it there then it is going to be very very dusty within few minutes or within few minutes. and if within few hours then it is going to be uh, very very dusty and you need to clean it again and again so just like that our mind is also just like that when we are here in the samsara it's very easy to get corrupted it's very easy to get dusty so when you are here in this samsara and no matter uh, where you are i think it's very easy to get corrupted it's very easy to have so many attachments so many anger so many jealousy pride and all this ignorance so it is you are going to have all these uh, negative emotions so what we need to do is we need to clean uh, all this negativity and how can we clean this uh, there are so many ways in mojirana practices but from all these many different ways but we think that vajrasattva practice is the most beneficial practice is the most easiest practice for you to do uh, to remove out all this uh, sins or all this obstacles that you will be having when you are practicing and i think that's it for the vajrasattva practice and we will stop here for today and the next session will be on mandala and some of you might have uh, have the translated book of torch of certainty and if you have that and if you are looking through that and if you are going through that then you might feel or you might know that we are not going by word by word and i think it's also very important to go by word by word but uh, even if we have like a rough idea or like a general idea about the practice then i think it's still very beneficial for us so and if we if i am like teaching in tibetan then i think it's very really important to go <clears throat> by word by word because we believe in all the transmission also so if i can go by word by word then you will also be able to receive the oral transmission from me the uh, uh, transmission transmission that i have received from my teacher you will be able to receive that also but since we are just going directly from english so i don't so i don't think it's really important <clears throat> to go by word by word but in the future if you are able to then i think we can always uh, go uh, word by word the uh, oral transmission like that and i think uh in my personal view uh i think uh, especially the empowerment and the oral transmission i think it's more important and more blessful if we are able to do it face to face instead of doing it online but i think giving teaching and giving some ideas on how to practice i think it's really good to do through online but uh empowerment and all our transmission i think it would be much better uh, if we are able to do face to face and it's not like all of you don't come here and it's not like i don't visit your place and it's not only me then there are so many other great teachers from our monastery like to come to also visit uh, malaysia quite a lot and uh, not only to come to then also uh, some other lamas from our monastery like lama ajo Uh, he also visit uh, Malaysia a lot, and then all the Cambodians they also visit Malaysia a lot, and not only the monks from our monastery but also from other different monasteries also visit Malaysia a lot. So you can receive 
hollow transmission from them also. And it is going to be very uh, beneficial if you are able to receive the empowerment and if you are able to receive the oral transmission. And then uh, the teaching, I think uh, what I have given or what I have offered, I think that's going to be quite okay. So if you are able to, then it would be much better if you are able to receive it again. And uh, the more we receive, it's only going to be beneficial for us. So sometimes people say that, <clears throat> oh, I've already received the teaching of this text and I don't have to receive it again. So it's not like that. No matter how many times you are able to receive, it's always beneficial. Uh, if you want to receive it once, twice, twice, four or five times, no matter how many times you are able to receive, it's always very important to receive uh, it again and again. And for example, like uh, the composer of the words of my perfect teacher, and uh, now these days it's quite easy to know someone because you, <clears throat> you have seen them on the internet. You might, if someone has composed someone or if someone has built a monastery, uh, the face is quite visible. You will be able to know. So if you see them, you will know them. But in the old time, it was not like that. So people would uh, compose uh, uh, text and still people would not be able to identify who who or he is. So even if they know the name, they would not be able to put a face with the name. So they would not know that. So just like that, and especially the people who are like very realized and they don't have this pride, they don't want to be known as, oh, I'm the one who composed this book, or I'm the one who gave this teaching like that. So they are very, very humble and they don't try to show off. And one time, uh, the composer of uh, the words of my perfect teacher. So he was going through <clears throat> uh, different places in Tibet. And then in one monastery, he stopped. And there, one of the, uh, one old guy was giving teaching on the words of, of my perfect teacher. And then the old guy came to him and he said, oh, this is a very good, very, beneficial text, it would be very helpful for you if you are able to receive this teaching. So, and he, uh, actually this guy was the composer of the uh, words of my perfect teacher, but because of his humbleness, he didn't say, oh, I don't have to receive this, this teaching. I am the one who composes, but he didn't say that. So he just pretended, that, oh, yeah, I need to listen to this. So he listened to, and he received all the teachings of words of my perfect teacher that he composed from a different guy, but he never said that, oh, uh, I am the composer. Uh, I don't need to uh, get the teaching. So this shows that he was very, very humble, and not only humble, but uh, different teachers have different means, uh, different ways to educate, or different ways to give teaching, and different ways to make you understand. So it's always very important uh, to receive uh, any teaching again and again. It's not like if you have received once, then you just stop and you say like, oh, I'm done with that. So if you are able to receive these teachings again, and I'm sure no matter who is teaching uh, in the future, they are going to be much better than me. And nobody is going to be worse than me who is going to teach. So it's, it is going to be more beneficial if you are able to receive this teaching again. So I would like to request all of you, if you have the time and if you have the opportunity, then please, again, in the future, if there is an opportunity, opportunity, then please uh, have the teaching again. Yeah, and then I think we'll stop here for today. And the next session will be on mandala practice. So we'll stop here for today and then we'll do the dedication prayer. No, and then they put your gamalo, the shapshuddle, some boy and then pack it. Pension shop, and then she took it in a jolly and number bar by shoe. So, none day I come just sip on it, only you get a number. Give an action ball up to buy a sip, it's solid to water by shoe. Thank you.